what we had was during the uh, the trade wars was this time last year a lot of talk about these supply chains being rejigged there's been more and more talk about that amid uh, this uh, pandemic but your findings are proving that perhaps it's not the case uh, yes i think the u.s china trade dispute without doubt you know has led many companies to reassess their supply chain strategies which includes um, you know, shifting from manufacturing and sourcing uh, outside of China, um, and we still see those trends you know, intact. However, the latest survey that we've conducted uh, in terms of the impact that COVID-19 is happen having on supply chain strategies, you know, the vast majority of our members indicate that you know, because of COVID-19, there's no real abrupt shift in terms of their supply chain strategies. So what do they see looking ahead then? I mean, are, are we do, we're still talking about 30% seeing a change here. And which is there any particular industry groups that we're looking at which are more likely to be shifting their supply chains than uh, others? Yeah, I think, um, you know, for that remaining 30%, uh, you know, there are a few patterns that emerge. Uh, one is that the um, companies that may have had plans to adjust those, uh, you know, their supply chain operations, COVID-19 could accelerate, you know, that. But I think that's really part of risk diversification as opposed to, you know, uh, an abrupt shift, you know, in and of itself due to COVID-19. Obviously, that's highlighted to companies that they really need to have a diverse and resilient supply chain, you know, in light of the pandemic. Uh, secondly, would be that uh, in the uh, medical uh, equipment uh, and products uh, sector, you know, given the acute supply shortages that some countries are experiencing, some of those companies, I think, are assessing, you know, how do they adjust their supply chains to, on the one hand, continue serving the China market, but on the other hand, ensure that, you know, there's adequate supply in other parts of the world. Alan, the Chinese government has rolled out a slew of measures to help cushion the blow for businesses and companies. Have American companies operating in China been able to leverage that aid? Uh, yes. Well, I think first off, what our surveys indicate is that uh, our member companies do not feel that they're being discriminated against in terms of being able to access that type of support. So whether you're a Chinese company or a foreign company, that you know that uh, support is generally available the uh the main support that our companies have received to date is really uh at the local level to get their operations back up and running and in that respect you know uh, most of our member companies uh, report that uh you know they have been able to get their you know manufacturing operations back on stream i think the more challenging areas for the small and medium-sized enterprises uh, that um, you know the effectiveness and the efficiency and the speed of that support for that vital sector of the economy. Um, we're working with uh, our member companies uh, to um, uh, to communicate to government that the large corporations, foreign corporations, play a meaningful role in terms of helping those supply those small to medium sized uh, companies stay afloat and um, revitalize you know, during this challenging period. I mean, you talked about uh, the disruption in the global supply chain and how companies in uh, China, U.S. companies in China, are, are tweaking to ensure that the disruption in the future will not be so great. Is there a sense how China can help make this global supply chain more resilient post-pandemic? Yes, well, I think, you know, certainly in the short term, it's really all about economic recovery, uh, you know, to ensure that, um, you know, products and services uh, you know, not can only uh, move smoothly across borders, but fundamentally that there's demand for those products and services. And, um, you know, coming back to our uh, latest surveys, you know, many of our member companies are experiencing, you know, a decline uh, in uh, demand. And um, we have uh, like virtually 40% in our last survey you know, indicated that, and 50% uh, uh, indicated that their revenues uh, were down significantly 10% or more. Um, so I think that's certainly part of the, you know, part of the equation. Um, the other area that I think where the Chinese government can take steps that do not necessarily put a big burden uh, from a, um, you know, from a, a, a financial perspective is to provide some sort of tax alleviation. And this is the number one um, request that our member companies have 
to provide tax relief. Uh, so on the one hand, it would, you know, it would um, result in lower revenues going into, you know, government coffers. But at the same time, it can really, you know, soften the blow for companies and um, hopefully get the, you know, uh, demand um, in the economy uh, revitalized and started. And the uh, uh, Chinese ambassador to the U.S. has been talking about effectively a rethinking of relations between the two countries. Now, that could mean anything, but one would assume it would be to perhaps sort out their differences and uh, kiss and make up, as it were. But on the other hand, it could mean that uh, there could be further decoupling. What do your uh, uh, forays into what your respondents say about all that? And is it a bit more nuanced in the sense that I think you alluded to it before that while supply chains may not be moved, there may be duplicate supply chains elsewhere, and what they're making in China is for China. Right, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that a growing number of our companies, of course, are concerned about the uh, um, rhetoric related to decoupling and the recent tensions and the ongoing tensions in the U.S.-China relationship. And they're responding in a number of ways. Uh, first, as you've alluded to, is uh, what we refer to as the China plus one strategy. Uh, and that is to say that, you know, that they have sufficient investment operations and uh, manufacturing footprints in China to serve the China market. Um, at the same time, uh, for those companies that are either very export-oriented or have a portion of their capacity dedicated both to the domestic market as to uh, as, as uh, to the export market as well, is to um, you know adjust that to have more flexibility. Um, the other uh, point I'd like to raise is that our most recent survey, where we asked our companies in terms of the uh, impact or the prospect for decoupling you know, from their perspective, um, there's, uh, you know, there was a slight uptick, uh, you know, in that sentiment, uh, at, you know, in the last month. And I think that uh, you know, the recent tensions as it relates to COVID-19 are, are, you know, are likely one of the reasons for that.